Hey guys, welcome back to this game development series where we are creating a 2D mobile game using Flutter and Flame Engine. So in the last video, we added this enemy manager component which is responsible for spawning random enemies depending on the player score. Then we also added some logic in Dino game class for hit detection between Dino and enemy. So since the last video, I've made three more changes. So the first one is I have increased the hit distance from 20 to 30 just to make sure that we don't miss some hits. Then in the dino class I have reduced the jump speed to minus 500 from minus 600 because I felt that with minus 600 dino was jumping a little too high. And finally I reduced the wait time from 2 seconds to 1 second in timer of dino. This will make sure that hit animation is displayed only for one second. So in this video, we are going to add a health system for the dino, a pause button to pause the game and a game over menu, which will allow players to restart the game. But before we start that, I would like to change how the score is displayed. Its color and font does not seem good. So the first step to change the font is to get a font file. I've already got one font file from Google fonts. So I'll open the assets folder of this project and create a new folder called fonts. In this folder, I'll paste the font that I have downloaded. It's called audio wide. Feel free to choose any font that you like. In this audio wide folder, we have two files. One is the actual font file and the other one is a license file. Now to be able to use this font in game, we'll have to add it to the pub spec. So I'll go to pubspec yaml and uncomment these lines located under font section. Family of this new font will be called audio wide and asset will specify the location of that font file. So as usual, we'll have to stop and rebuild the app before using the new assets. Before launching it again, let's modify the score component so that it uses the new font. For that, I'll go to the dino game class. Here, score text represents the score on screen and it is initialized in the constructor of dino game. So here I'll use the config property of text component which needs an object of text config. And in this we can specify font family as audio white. Let's also set the color of this component as colors.white. Now let's launch the app to see the changes. And as you can see the score text now looks much better. So next, let's see how to pause the game. As pausing the game is a must-have feature for almost every game, Flame Engine provides methods like Pause Engine and Resume Engine. We just have to take care of setting up the buttons on the UI. So my main aim will be to add a pause button on the top left corner of the screen. Although creating a button using Flame is possible, it isn't as easy as creating a button widget in Flutter. And probably even the developers at Flame understand this. Which is why Flame allows you to overlay Flutter widgets on top of underlying game widget. So to get the ability to add or remove overlay widgets on your game, you just have to add the has overlay mixin to your game class. So once we do this, as the last step in Dino Game Constructor, we can use the add widget overlay method to add a pause button. So this method needs two parameters. First one is a string which is used to identify each overlay widget uniquely. And the second parameter is the widget that you want to overlay. So I'll specify the overlay name as HUD which stands for heads up display. Basically I'll be using the same overlay to display the remaining lives on right side. And for the widget parameter I'll call build HUD which is a method that will create the widget. So from this build head method, I'll return an icon button. Its icon property will be a pause icon and on press will be an empty callback for now. So as soon as I do a hot restart, you can see that we get this tiny pause button at the top left corner. Let's change the color of this icon to white and size to 30. And keep in mind that this widget overlay does not work well with hot reload. So we'll have to constantly perform hot restart to avoid this bad state error. And now the pause button looks a little better. So to make the game pause, we can just call the pause engine method inside the on pressed of this pause button. 
Now if I do a hot restart and then click on this pause button, you can see that the whole game went into pause state. But now there is no way to unpause the game. And for this, we'll be adding a pause menu which will display a button allowing players to resume the game. This menu will be one more widget overlay. So to make things easier, I'll call pause game method here. This method will take care of pausing the flame engine and displaying the pause menu. Now let's define this method. First step in pause game will be to pause the flame engine. So the pause engine will be moved to pause game. And next step will be to call add widget overlay to display the pause menu. I'll name this overlay as pause menu. And the actual widget will be generated by another method called build pause menu. Now let's define build pause menu. Here you can be as creative as you want and use all sorts of flutter animations for building the pause menu. But I'll keep it simple. I'll just display a text widget for title and an icon button for resuming the game. Both of these widgets will be inside a column widget which is centered by a center widget. Then the icon property of icon button will be a play arrow with color as white and size as 30. And in the on press of this icon button, I'll call resume game, another method that we'll have to define. So exactly opposite to pause game, resume game will be responsible for removing the pause menu overlay and restarting the flame engine. So to remove any overlay, we can use remove widget overlay method. This method needs the name of the overlay as input. So I'll put the string paused here. And after removing this overlay, I'll call resume engine to start the flame engine. And now let's do a hot reload to see the changes. So if I press the pause button now, we'll get the widget overlay. But it's currently very small and is not properly visible. So to make it look better, I'll put the column inside a card widget. And let's set the color property to colors.black dot with opacity of 0.5. It will make it transparent. Let's change the style property of text widget to increase the font size and change color to white. And for the column widget, I'll set main axis alignment to main axis alignment dot center and main axis size to main axis size dot min. This will place the content of column in center vertically. Now let's test this by doing a hot restart. And as you can see, now the overlay is visible and is in center. Let's make some more adjustments to how this looks. So first, let's make sure that all Flutter widgets use the same font we have used for square text. For that, I'll go to the main.dart file. Here, in the theme data of material app, I'll set font family as audio wide. And if I check the pause menu again, it is now using the audio wide font. Now let's wrap the column inside a padding widget with symmetric horizontal and vertical padding of 150 respectively. This will expand the border of card widget. And while we are at it, let's also use the shape property of card widget to make the corners rounded. And now let's do a hot restart to check how it looks. Okay, so this looks pretty decent to me. Now let's click on the play button to resume the game. And it looks like the game engine resume, but there is some issue with the overlay. And yes, I specified a wrong name for the overlay here. It should be pause menu. And now if I do a hot reload and check this, it should work as expected. Okay, so now we have a working pause menu and we can move to adding the life system for Dino. So I would like to display the number of remaining lives on the top right corner as part of the HUD. So in the build HUD method, I'll wrap the pause icon button in a row widget. And let's set the main axis alignment for this row as main axis alignment dot space between. This will make sure that all the widgets have as much space as possible in between them. So as the second widget of this row, I'll add another row widget with its children list containing 5 icon widgets. All of these icons will display the favorite icon which is just a heart symbol. Let's set the size for all of them as 30. So if I do a hot restart, you can see that those 5 icons are now visible on the top right corner. But these are just placeholders for now. 
will have to build these icons depending on the actual remaining life of Dino. But right now we don't have anything to indicate life of Dino. So let's add that real quick. For that I'll go to Dino class. Here we can add a simple integer to store number of remaining lives of Dino. But as the row widget will have to update whenever this integer changes, it will be much better if we store life as a value notifier of type int. And in the constructor, I'll set life as a value notifier with initial value of 5. And every time Dino gets hit, we'll have to reduce value of life by 1. So I'll do this in the hit method. And now in the build hard method, I can wrap the row widget in a value listenable builder. If you don't know how value listenable builders and value notifiers work, check out my video on that topic. Basically, it's a very simple way of managing state of a single object and rebuilding widgets without having to call set state. So this value listenable builder will need a builder function and a value listenable. So for value listenable, I'll use dino.life. The builder function will now return the row widget and we can remove this placeholder code. So now this builder will receive current remaining lives of dino as the second parameter. And we can use this value to decide how many hearts will be filled and how many will be empty. First, I'll create an empty list of widgets. This will be used as children list of row widget. Then I'll do a classic for loop from 0 to 5 and inside this for loop I'll add the heart icon to widget list. Finally this list will be passed as children property to row widget. And now in this icon widget we can check if i is less than current value. If it is less we'll use the normal favorite widget. But if it is not I'll use the favorite underscore border icon. This will make sure that number of filled hearts is equal to number of remaining lives of Dino. So for example, if number of remaining lives is let's say 3, then last two icons will be shown as outlined heart. Now let's save this and do a hot restart and we got an error in debug console. So this is pretty common issue. Basically in Dino.dart some of the auto imports are causing name clash. And this happens because Flame Engine has this animation class which is exactly the same name as animation class of Flutter. So to avoid such name clash, you can always use named imports like import package flame slash animation dot dart as flame animation. And then you can use animation class from this file as flame animation dot animation. But since I have faced this before, I know if I remove this last import and use foundation.dart, it solves the problem. And now if I do a hot restart, you can see that we have those life indicators in the top right corner. And as Dino gets hit by enemies, number of filled icons start decreasing. But before Dino runs out of lives, let's pause the game because we still don't have code to detect that and show a game over screen. So to detect this, I'll go to update method of dino game class. Here after all the processing, we can check if dino.life.value is less than or equal to 0. If this is true, I'll add a new overlay using add widget overlay. This one will be called game over menu. And the widget will be returned by get game over menu method. And definition of this method will be very similar to pause menu. This will contain two text widgets and one icon button. First text widget will show the title as game over and the next text widget will show current score. An icon button will be a replay button which will restart the game. So I'll copy all the padding, card and column properties from pause menu. Now before we implement the on pressed on replay button we'll have to make sure that when game is over, the game gets paused. So for that, I'll create one more method called game over. And this add widget overlay for adding game over menu can be moved inside this new game over method. But before calling this add widget overlay, I'll call pause engine so that the flame engine gets paused first. 
and let's save this and do a hot restart and wait for the dino to lose all the lives and as you can see now we get the game over menu and the game has paused now let's implement the on press of replay button so here i'll call reset method which will take care of resetting all the game data to its initial state and after reset I'll call resume engine so that the flame engine starts again. But before starting the game, we'll have to remove this game over menu. And for that, I'll call remove widget overlay and pass in overlay name as game over menu. Now, inside the reset method, I'll first set the score to 0. Then, let's set the life of dino to 5 again. And apart from these two, we'll also have to reset enemy manager to bring its spawn level and timer back to normal so for that i'll call the reset method on enemy manager from dino games reset method and now let's create this reset in enemy manager so in the reset method of enemy manager first i'll set the spawn level back to 0 and then i'll reset the timer with its wait time as 4 second after resetting all the game data in reset method of dino game will also have to remove any and all enemy present in game world this can be done using the where type method on components and for each enemy i'll call mark to remove this will make sure that all the enemies are removed before the game restarts and that is it for the reset method now let's do a hot restart and see if it works so after running out of lives we get this game over menu And if I click on replay, it restarts the game with zero score and full life. But as you saw, the hit animation was still playing when the game restarted. So to avoid that, in the reset method, I'll call dino dot run, so that the dino animation gets reset to run animation before game restarts. Now, gameplay wise, everything is almost ready. We just need a main menu, background music, and sound effects. which will add in the upcoming videos but before we end this video i would like to show an issue which is pretty easy to miss so while the game is running if i try to switch the app or just go to recent apps the game will still keep on running like you can see the score when i opened recent apps was 925 but if i go back to the game it suddenly increases this is because the game didn't pause and this is not good So to detect this we can override the life cycle state change method in dino game class. This method will get called whenever there is a change in life cycle of the app. And the current app life cycle state is passed in as input to this method so that we can perform necessary tasks like pausing the game. So here I'll add a switch case block for state with all the four app life cycle state as values. And except for app life cycle state dot resume, I'll call pause game in all the other states. This will make sure that game gets paused whenever app becomes inactive. And now, if I do a hot restart and try to switch the apps, you can see the game gets paused, and the pause menu gets displayed correctly. So that was all for this video. If you found it useful, do hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.